Hey guys, so I got this on 6, 11, 23, uh, 5, 20 in the morning to 1, 30 p.m. Um, there's 14 different ones. I'm going to just rattle them off. Um, Hallelujah, God's Plans, The Mystery in the Sky, The Potter, I Will Not Wrestle with Man Much Longer, Rest in Me, Sand, Spring, Hallelujah, Leaders, Willing, Anointed, Holy, holy, holy hope. Okay, so let's go. First one. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Praise the King. Praise the everlasting King. Second one. God's plans. This is the Lord God. I am. I have the plans in my hand. My ways are higher than your ways. Hear my words. I know the time. I step down to share with you to prepare. Change is coming. Change has begun. Those with fear do not trust me. Those with anxiety do not trust me. Those with joy trust me. Those looking forward to the changes trust me. Read of Moses. He was a mere man. He did not know I called him from birth for the role he had. When he was raised in Pharaoh's house, he had no knowledge I would use him against the Pharaoh to come. When he was a shepherd, he did not know I had already seen his future. He did not know I was to work mighty works through him. He had to believe in me, to take the steps of faith that he did, to go before the Pharaoh with my words, to go with boldness declaring my prophetic future for the Israelites. Imagine the courage. How could he do this? Only through faith in me. I told him my plan before it occurred. Why? So as it unfolded, his already bold faith would become more firmly established. Each step of obedience made Moses more firm in his trust in me. This is what I ask of you. We are to embark in new times. Things never seen will occur. For my people, much like what happened for Moses and the Israelites, but even more so, consider what this was like for those involved. Just as now, there were people of varying maturity with me. Some pose that they are from me. As I gather, move, provide, and show my words through those that are of true faith, Recall the Israelites. Who will you act like? You will see wonders that no one on earth has seen. Will you quickly forget and return to idols? Will you grumble in the changes? Will you humbly obey with reverence and awe? Will you try to take over my leaders in hopes for yourself and your will to lead? Consider carefully all the people I rescued from Egypt and their reactions toward me. I see hearts. Guard your heart above all else. Decide now to be like those who had awe and reverence. Decide now to rejoice in what you are to see. Decide now to step out in faith just as Moses. Each individual Christian will not hold the prominent position of Moses. But each individual Christian will need the same trust in me and the same agreement to obey in faith. It is easy to look back on all those before and say, how could it have been done better? But is it as easy to look forward and do a better job? All I ask is faith and obedience. Confidently know that I will provide. Do not doubt. I hate doubt. It is of the double-minded. They only half-heartedly believe in me. This is to truly reject me. If you doubt, then you do not trust. If you have trouble with this, pray and ask. This is not blind trust. I have shown you the plans. Those that do not believe and trust are not of me. Mine believe me fully. Come to me boldly and respectfully. And ask for your provisions. I am the Lord God. I love and care for my own. Believe this. If you have read of my wonders 
and you still do not trust me, you are not of me. I know your journey. I know many of you have not seen miracles yet in your times. You do not believe. Consider how we could be at the hour of rapture and this mighty miracle of God of bringing his own home. Then consider how strange it would be that no other miracles would occur around this. Look back at Moses. How many miracles occurred before and after the large miracle for deliverance? The parting of the Red Sea was the focal point for deliverance. But see how I showed my power and my might and my skill in my wonders to both those who did not believe of me and those that did. Notice also that I had strong rules to follow for mine, for miracles that exempted my own from the consequences. I do not change. To be exempt from the consequences to come, you must be fully mine, sanctified, holy, consecrated to me, living in righteousness, and this includes full trust in what I say. Do not doubt. If I had not told you the plans before, then there could be a reason to wonder. But I have told you what is to come. Listen and obey. Trust me. Be in joyful awe as I show the world my wonders. Be reverent in obedient faith. I am the Lord God Almighty. Be at peace with what is to come. Mine shall be secure. Number three. The mystery in the sky. Hear me one, hear me all. The sky shall hold a mystery. Do not believe what comes after. These are the plans of men. They aim to control. Hear not what they say. They aim to deceive. Their wickedness is an abomination to me. Focus on me. Fourth one. The potter. Everyone wishes to know what is to come. When things will occur. I hear your words. I hold the key to all understanding. Not all things are to be accessed by all people. I have given you much through my anointed who speak my words. Does the clay need to know the shape the potter shall choose? I will reveal what I will reveal. As the clay, your job is to be pliable and ready to be shaped into a willing vessel. With a master potter in control, the need to see the end shape of the collection of vessels is not needed. Only trusting that the potter knows how to make the clay into each appropriate and useful vessel is needed. The potter is the artist. He has the freedom to work with the clay and shape the clay as he sees fit. In the end, you will see. In the end, you will know that by knowing too much, it would not have helped you. In the end, those that choose to be a piece of art in the hands of the potter are the joyful ones, the ones who are gazed at with respect and honor. Be the clay that is usable. Number five, I will not wrestle with man much longer. I will not wrestle with man much longer. The time of wrath is quickly approaching. The level of evil has superseded all generations. Although they will continue to increase until the end of my wrath, do not have compassion on those who I have wrath upon. They are an unholy and wicked people. You should pray that they turn to me before the allotted day. When the day has begun, then those that receive my wrath are deserving. They have rejected me at every turn, and they have filled themselves with the depths of wickedness offered by the evil one. Know that I do not want one to perish. No, not one. But it would not be just to allow them to continue on. They will receive their appropriate recompense from me. Man's days are but a few. They have choices every day to choose me or to choose to do evil. Continually choosing evil sets a man's path to destruction. Pray for those on this path. Their way to hell is soon approaching. Pray they stop and reverse course. Man was not made for the eternal fire and eternity of difficulty. Why do they reject me? Pride. 
Only the proud reject me. When all on earth have the ease of seeing evidence of me, an opportunity to know me, there has never been a time on the earth that it has been so accessible to know me, and remarkably, it is the time when the fewest people know me. This is pride. The proud shall fall. Number six, rest in me. Come to me, all of you who are worn out and tired from this world. Lay your burdens at my feet. Allow me to carry them. Give up the need to carry them. Learn the freedom in allowing me to carry your heaviness. Learn how much your joy can increase when you allow me to handle it all. Let go, truly let go. Pray about what bothers your soul and then let it go and let me carry it. Focus on me instead. Finances, unsaved, what is to come, bothers in your tasks, dissensions, the state of the world, how much farther, let it all go. Give it to me and see how light and easy your life becomes. This is how it is designed. You are not expected to carry it. Rest in me. Rest in the peace that comes when you let it go. Jesus. Number seven, sand. Sand. How many grains of sand are upon the earth? Do you know? I do. Think of this. If I can continually keep track of the grains of sand, can I also carry you through the beginnings of sorrows? Of course. I will shelter those who trust me. Please trust me. I wait to share my miracles. It gives me joy to provide for my own. My children are my delight. To give them unexpected gifts brings me joy. I am to rescue each and every one of mine. Your experience in the rescue can be blessed or stressed. Blessed and filled with my wonders if you come to me with trust. And stressed if you demand to carry it all and demand to walk in your own wisdom. Choose God. Number eight, spring. Every spring I show my miracles. The trees which have been dormant come back to life with fresh leaves. The buds grow into leaves. Some trees also have flowers. The flowers are my gift to bring joy. They have color and variety. What you are about to see in the church is much like spring. The church is a dormant tree. It has not been partaking in miracles of late, but I am about to awaken the church. And like a dormant tree that springs quickly back into life and brings forth leaves and flowers, the church is going to burst forth in life. Miracles, the spread of the gospel, the visible indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the church is going to be as the most beautiful flowering tree of all. No one will miss what is about to occur. All will see. Many will change. So many will finally submit with the church in full display. I'm eager to watch this wonder spread throughout the whole world. This will result in more people than have ever been seen in a time coming and being filled with the Holy Spirit. The church will be fully functioning in its full glory. Rejoice. The time quickly approaches to see the mystery fully functioning. Love and joy are about to spread at a rate never seen. Rejoice. You were chosen before birth to be alive at this time. This is the benefit you get for living through these difficult years and watching the world decline. It is to be the eyewitness to true revival, to witness my Holy Spirit flood the entire earth. Rejoice. Number nine, hallelujah. Hallelujah, is there anything the Lord cannot do? No, nothing is too difficult for him. Hold on a little farther and a harvest will come in. Be part of my plan. Be part of those who harvest the halfborns. Be one of those that buds and blossoms on the tree of life. Come with an open and willing heart. Keep yourself in righteousness. Be my willing vessels for the remaining time to come. Rejoice, the best is yet to come. Number 10, this is to the leaders. Leaders, humbly come before me and ask. I will tell you how to prepare. 
I have differing rules for each of you. Your preparations will be slightly different. Number 11, this is for those willing. They haven't been called out as leaders, but they do have an open heart to serve, okay? Willing. You with willing hearts, come to me. I will teach you how to prepare. Request of me daily and I will come to you. Stay steadfast until you hear. Number 12, to the anointed. Anointed, the enemy is at your door. You have all been experiencing strong attacks. I am proud how you have fought. I am proud how humbly you share your battles with one another. There is strength in togetherness. The enemy has not knowledge of your soon departure. They believe they know, but they do not hold the dates. As you fight, be always aware that through me, there is no defeat. Call down my power. It is all at your request. Nothing shall harm you before you leave. The fight is real. The fight is physical. The fight is psychological. The fight is spiritual. But with me, there is no defeat. Continue with the fight. These last days before you go, you are fine-tuning your skills that will be used upon your return. Pray higher and higher authority over the evil ones. Use wisdom in your timing. Allow what you can for each strike by the enemy's torments. It draws more into their fight. Then when you finally call on my power, you take more of them to the pit with my finality. This will ease the number of evil ones against those whom I will shine miracles through for the war. Keep praying. I honor the strength at which you are calling me in these last moments. Hold tight. We will not lose. This is the beginning of their end. Rejoice. Number 13. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The age of Jesus Christ nears the kingly rule. For centuries, this has been awaited on earth. The nearness is tangible. Yes, your generation, those who have stayed faithful through the decline, you have seen the sadness in times of sorrow. You have been heartbroken by the church in its sickness. You have been horrified by society, but rejoice. You will witness the reign of Jesus Christ, your generation, the generation to bring the church the most miracles that it will ever see. Rejoice. The trials and struggles will soon be over and the joys and awe will be the blessings to follow. Soon you will see Jesus Christ in the clouds and be caught up to him. Soon, hold on, keep looking at me, God. And the 14th one, hope, hope. What is better than hope? Nothing, have hope. All these things shall come to pass. When difficulties come, keep your mind on what is to come, have hope. The Lord God reigns forevermore and he is on your side. Very soon, all that you hope for will be reality. Not much further church, hold on. The days left of preparing are few. It is time to make your choice. Choose me, the Lord God Almighty, the giver of hope. Who can stop the Lord God Almighty? No one. Hear the words of the Lord. These words are true. The one who bears them is my servant. Hear me. That's it. And I hope that has been helpful as well as encouraging and See you next time because I know I've got more I've got to put out. This is just what I could get done by today.